When you do sublimation on 100% polyester, the ink is in the fabric. It's not on the fabric, it's in the fabric. And that is the big difference. This is what we are making in this tutorial and I cannot wait to share this process with you. I did a very good job of keeping my composure and I can't wait to get to the end so you can see how I got from the beginning all the way to the end. Now, I do need you to put your thinking caps on and think back to last week when I showed you how to use that slice tool. You're going to have to keep your thinking caps on and remember back to slice because you will need to be able to slice in order to do this. But I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Okay. So hello everyone. Welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we are doing sublimation on 100% polyester. This is a Cricut brand shirt. I'm going to show you every single thing I use and I'm going to show you my full process. At the end of this video, if you find this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. So without further ado, let's look at materials and then head right on over into Cricut Design Space. The materials I'm going to use for this project include my Cricut Maker. However, you could also do this project from any full-size Cricut cutting machine. I'm going to use heat-resistant gloves, a green standard grip mat, Cricut heat-resistant tape, Hippo sublimation ink, a Cricut men's medium shirt. I'm using a lint roller, a sub sublimation paper. I'm going to use a couple of sheets of butcher paper. My heat press is a Starcraft clamshell 15 by 15 heat press. There it is right there. And my printer is an Epson EcoTank 2760, which you will see when my images are being printed out. Okay, so without further ado, let's head over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to my Cricut Maker. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a text box and I am going to go up to the font selections. I'm going to do a search for a system font. The font that I'm searching for is one that is called Impact. I'm using that font because it is big and bold and it will cover everyone's um, face. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is turn on my caps lock and I'm going to double click in the text box. I'm going to type the word love. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to resize this whole text box to a width of 11.413 and a height of 5.248. I'm gonna keep the view at my on my screen right at 100%. I am going to bring the letter space in a little bit. Okay, I do want the letters to be a little bit closer together. Okay, I'm gonna also ungroup them and I'm going to select this V and this E and just use my key, um, the left arrow key on my keyboard to bring that a little bit closer. Okay, now I have my word and I'm going to go ahead and um, group it back together because I still want the width to be 11.413 and I want the height to be at 5.248. I just wanted the letters to be closer together, okay? If they are ungrouped, that means that um, I can select individual letters and I want to keep it like that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is grab the photo that I'm using. It is this photo of my daughters and I, and I am going to bring the view down to right at, mm, I'll bring it down to 25% for now, and I'll take these letters and I will move them, wait, I'll move the photo so that it is behind the letter. So I'm going to click send to back. I'm going to put the letters on top of the photo. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my view back up to like right at 50% because I want you to be able to see what I'm going to do right here. 
I want to be able to see everyone's face once I slice this. And one way to check that is by changing the letters to uh, my operation type is changing it to a pen. And that will help make sure that I can see what my cut will look like once this is all sliced out. Okay, because I don't want to have too much of one person's face and not enough of another person's face or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to change these letters to a pen for now. And that will let me see, you know, if I have enough of everybody's face. And so far, it looks like I do. Let me double check. Okay, I can see all of hers. Mine is a little bit cut off. Okay, I think that looks perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and I really need you to pay attention to this part because this can be a little bit confusing and I don't want anyone to be confused. What I'm going to do is over on my layers panel, I'm going to use my, I'm going to rely heavily on my layers panel. I'm going to select the photo, I'm going to hold my shift key, and then I'm going to select the letter L and I'm going to click slice. I'm not going to move anything. The next thing I'm going to do is select the photo again, hold my shift key. I'm going to select the letter O and then I'm going to slice. I'm not going to move anything. I'm going to hold my, select the photo, hold my shift key, select the letter V, and then I'm going to slice. I'm going to select the photo, I'm going to hold my shift key, I'm going to select the letter E, and then I'm going to slice. Now that all four of my letters have been sliced out, and I can tell by looking at the L, O, V, E right here in my layers panel, now I can move the photo away to double check to see that I like the way this looks, okay? And not only do I like it, but I love it. <laughs> I already love it. What I'm going to do now is go back to my layers panel and I am going to delete all of the pen cuts, all of my pen slice results. So this E, I don't need it anymore. I'm going to delete it. The V, that is a pen. I don't need it. I'm going to delete that. The O that is a pen, I'm going to delete that. And the L that is a pen, I am going to delete that. I also don't need this anymore. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to select the L and the O. And I am going to add an offset to this that it is, that is 0 0.10. Okay. I'm going to click apply and you see the offset turns black. I don't want the offset to be black, even though I think that would it wouldn't look bad. I think it would actually look really nice. I just don't want that color. Um, the color that I want is I think I want this very light green color right here. I think that'll look nice on my shirt. Let me see what gray looks like. Gray would look nice. That gray will look nice, but I, I want to stick with this green. Okay, so now I'm finished with the L and the O, and I am going to go ahead and flatten this. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the V and the E. Okay, I'm going to choose an offset that is already set to 0 0.10. I'm going to click apply and it turned black. I'm going to choose that light green color. And with the V and the E selected, just the V and the E, I'm also going to flatten that. So now I have two sheets that should be print then cut and I am ready to click make it. Okay, so now I have two sheets that will be printed from my printer and I need to now I can I have the option to mirror here or mirror in my printer options. 
I am going to go ahead and mirror here. I'm going to mirror here. I'm going to mirror this mat also. Okay. And I am going to click continue. And I am connected once again to my Cricut Maker via Bluetooth. The first thing I have to do is send this to my printer. I am going to send this to my Epson EcoTank 2760. I'm going to keep the ad bleed on. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. You can do whatever works best for you. I always keep it on. I am going to choose use system dialog. I'm going to click print. Then my printer options will come up. Okay. I see my Epson EcoTank 27 series uh, printer. It is ready. I want to click preferences. I am going to choose my sublimation preset with the mirror off. Okay. My sublimation preset settings are saved in a video that I will link below this tutorial, just in case you're wondering what my settings are. Okay. I am going to do a print preview just to make sure that this is going to print exactly how I want it. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click print. And when I do that, it's not actually going to print. What is going to happen is going to show me what my print preview will look like. OK, so I have my first page and this is what my print preview will look like. And I am in love with this. OK, so I am going to go ahead and get this printed out. Everything that I'm going to do from here will be back on the camera. This is my Epson EcoTank 2760 printer. I'm going to put one sheet of paper in at a time. I put my paper in so that the word A sub is facing the back. And I use this back tray. I'm going to click print. I'll speed this part up. As you can see, my image is not very vivid yet. I always let my image sit on my heat plate. So I'm going to put this image on the heat plate and let the ink completely dry. And while that's happening, I will be printing the other part, the L and the O. So you can see that my first cut of my first printed image is on my heat plate. And the second one is getting ready to go on my heat plate. The next thing I'm going to do is get the first image cut out while that one is sitting on the heat plate, but I never skip this step. Sometimes my image will sit on the heat plate for about two minutes. I have my first image on the mat in the same exact direction that it's in in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to load it in my Cricut Maker. And I am using the infusible ink transfer sheet cut setting. I'm going to click the flashing C and get this cut out. Because of the cut setting that I've chosen, the infusible ink transfer, I always get a good clean cut um, by using that setting so I can just peel my paper away and my image will be cut out perfectly so there's my image and now it's time for me to get my shirt press so let's move over to the heat press I am going to get my shirt opened up and I'm going to lint roll it now, Cricut brand shirts are 100% polyester, and when I'm doing sublimation on polyester, I do prefer the Cricut brand of shirts. That is just a personal preference. Um, to me, they are good quality. Okay, I'm going to get a, a piece of butcher paper put inside my shirt to protect it from any of the sublimation ink going through 
the back of the shirt. I'm going to do a just a finger check, three fingers down. And now I'm going to do a quick pre-press on my shirt just to, you know, heat it up. Now I'm going to grab my image, which I am super excited about. I want you to take note that the V and the E are connected and that was done purposefully because I do want to be able to, I want help getting this lined up on my shirt and the L and the O are also connected, okay? So I am going to do my best to get this lined up and tape down and hopefully I do a good job of making sure it's even Let's see, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see. Let me bring you a little, little bit closer so you can see it. That is what it looks like. Hopefully it's taped down enough. Maybe that O can be taped down a little bit more. Let me add a little bit more tape to the O. Just to be on the safe side okay I think we're good one more piece one more piece one more piece one more piece at the top okay I think we're good now I am going to cover this with butcher paper and I'm going to press this on 400 degrees for 60 seconds It's beeping. I have my gloves. I'm ready to see <laughs> what this looks like. So that's always a good sign when you can see the image from the other side of the of the um, sublimation paper. So let's see. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Look. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see it. Wait until you see this. Let me take this butcher paper out so y'all can get a good, a real, a real a good look at it because you already know I'm going to say, you already know I'm going to say I love it, right? You already know I'm going to say I love it, right? Look at that. Oh my goodness. This, y'all, 
Let me put it back on the heat press so you can get a really good look at it. Let me put it back on the heat press so you can get it. Because I don't think you can really see it as good as it is. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look how big it is. Look how vibrant it is. O-M-G. Look at that. You know I love it. You already know I love it. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching.